Hey, I just want to give a bunch of uh, my thoughts and prayers to everybody over in uh, West Mexico, Northwest Mexico, and Southern California who are going to be hit by that hurricane. Uh, this one's named Hillary. Uh, Hurricane Hillary is, you know, coast uh, going up uh, Mexico. Um, now, for the most part, I'm hoping that it hits mostly just the desert area of it. And if, you know, it could cross and die off here in, in Texas, that'd be fantastic. Uh, because, you know, we really need the water. And since it's going to hit mostly West Texas, where, you know, there's very little... Uh, very little life out there, you know, to destroy anyway. Most of it is centered around here. Here in San Antonio, it's where water was never a problem. There was tons of organisms and insects and mites and um, into and things insect eating bugs, um, as well as insect eating animals. Um, and snakes and, you know, lizards, reptiles, um, you know, quadrupeds and, you know, all types of birds. You know, here in San Diego, before we had all these water droughts and everything, we had plenty of water. We had plenty of life and it was always being created in some form or another. We always had a whole mixture of them. Um, and, and even though it's a nice break from being eaten alive, <laughs> so to say. Um, you know, it, we still need the water over here. So for those in, in West Mexico, Puerto Vallarta and further up, up to the Northwest, you know, best of luck to you. Hope everything turns out okay. But, um, also in Southern California, you know, much like in Mexico, there's a lot of homeless in camps. There's a lot of migrant camps. There's a lot of people that are in, in, in the streets right now. And um, there's a lot of, in, in America, there's a lot of jobless, you know, or people that have jobs but but can't afford homes. So they're also living in the streets despite the fact that they're working full time, you know. And it starts right there in the South, uh, South California, Southern California, where San Diego is and the uh, surrounding counties. So it's it's a small bit of a concern. Um, we already have disaster relief going to one of our states, which is Hawaii. Um, needless to say, there's going to be some out there. So I'm hoping that we can all hear those of us who aren't affected by that, who won't be, you know, damaged by it. Hence the reason why I'm praying for the uh, for the hurricane, should it come inland, it, that it should be stuck down in the south, southwestern region, where it'll most definitely break apart and die down by the time it reaches Texas. Um, we can handle it, you know. Here, here, especially here in San Antonio, we have so many drainage ditches. We have one that looks like as deep as a canyon, but it's you know it's it's basically still just a dried up creek. Um, and we have tons of them scattered all over the place naturally by nature and through neighborhoods. Most of the modern neighborhoods, however, don't have a lot of drainage put into place. And we've been finding that out since the early 2000s when so many people have been migrating here. Tons of uh, housemakers, housemaking companies have been here and they've been charging 300 to half a 300,000 to half a million dollars for a, an ordinary three bedroom two bath two car garage house which is just stupid um but they're getting away with it you got people that are paying for paying that price to get out of whatever neighborhood or whatever state that they're they come from and they're paying that type of price and they're finding out through rain disasters and stuff like that or just like a simple rainstorm where drainage was never put into uh put into thought proper drainage or even you know drainage that coincides with the natural drainage you know and they're getting their houses flooded in and stuff they're getting water damage and everything and it's you know it's really their own fault for not uh for not looking into that you know and it's the real estate the real estate has you know 
you know, everybody has the 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 one hundred percent right to sue the real estate company and pay for the damages or get them a damn new house and all this other stuff and invest uh, invest uh, money into a uh, proper drainage system. You know, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the real estate companies deserve what they get. You know, they deserve to they deserve to get sued. They deserve to go broke. They deserve to get run down out of business and stuff for the stupid non-thinking methods that they're doing. You know, there are people that are finding out the hard way that, you know, it's not structurally safe or sound or just, you know, it's not put in the right spot, you know. They think because it's good good solid land for foundation that it's that it's okay to build and it's not okay to build, you know. They're not thinking about the natural disasters, the natural, uh, uh, when mother nature is, is at its, is at her strongest. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, here we could use some of that rain back to the subject. We could use some of that rain. We could use that, uh, hurricane to pass through those West coastal cities who are more than already prepared to handle hurricanes and, you know, we can, you know, here in Texas, we're more than ready for, for any hurricane to come in and hit us, especially because by the time it makes it inland, it's, it's already dying down. And all we're left is just the rain as opposed to the, you know, the tormented, whatever the hell, you know, winds, torrental winds. And, um, same thing when it comes in from the Gulf, you know, all our beach cities are, are, are prepared for hurricanes you know they, they can handle them no sweat and by the time it comes here to san antonio which is just before all the hill country and the hill country slows it down sometimes stops the the hurricanes from hitting uh you know stops the hurricanes right there and uh you know we're fine we can tough it out also it's it's everybody else that i just really really have a really really have a uh um a hard time grasping how, you know, how in the world do these people survive over there in the West Coast? How do they survive over there? You know, they don't have, I mean, they, even their homeless encampments are not as on good, solid ground as they are over here in Texas. And here in San Antonio, especially, the only people that are actually homeless right now are the ones who uh, who are either in line to get help from one of the five housing authorities one of the five housing organizations or they're the the ones that don't want to meet the criteria that is that in order to get housing help you have to be clean and for those of us that remember what a drug addiction was like it's psh, kicking it is easier said than done um you know so it's you know you got those that are that just don't want to, uh, um, they want a house, but they don't want to quit the habit. And then you got those that, you know, don't have a habit, but they have to wait the long ass line in order, the line of clients in order to get a house. And then to top it all off, there's some houses that just aren't available because they're, you know, they're not section eight or they're not such and such, you know, they, they the houses require a certain type of, of, uh, client, uh, concerning disability or section eight or something like that. Um, you know, so, you know, the current homeless dude or do du or lady is, uh, is, you know, unhoused and having to, you know, live in a vehicle or something, you know, while waiting. Um, but even still, that's, that's not too, too serious of a problem. Given the fact that currently, as I'm speaking this here in the middle of August, there is an entire neighborhood that is going to be built for housing the homeless. Uh, they're, they're thin houses. They're about as thin as, uh, they're about as thin as two containers side by side. And they're, you know, two story and stuff with a little side staircase or something like that, you know, uh, basically looking like a two story loft apartment, you know, or two story, uh, studio apartment, but nevertheless, they're houses, 
you know, uh, and, and, and it's going to be housing the homeless and all this good stuff. So that's, that's good. Um, and we got that building right now. We got that under construction as I speak, you know, so it's not like, you know, we can't handle these harsh times. We can handle them, you know, especially here in Saytown, you know, we're here in San Antonio. We're just on top of things. And even still, I'm I'm all for if they have to evacuate all of the homeless and all that, move them here to Texas, you know, do it. Let them occupy abandoned towns, towns that America just doesn't want, you know, for whatever reason. We have so we've got hundreds of towns that have been abandoned because they just does not provide what this provides, what a big city provides what a major city provides and that's you know that's a downer but it's it's true you know there's houses with solid foundations uh a townhouse you know a post office so service can be slow as far as communication with loved ones and friends and family and people that they're vetting with and all that but you know you you gut out uh, an entire town uh city council which is just going to be like this two-story building you know 200 feet long you know you gut out a town like that a uh, town hall and turn it into an embassy and you're good you know you've 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 got a, an embassy and uh and a, a clinic and all that you know all set for the migrants that are there you know and again, in an abandoned town that nobody even wants, you know. And if you don't do it for the migrants, you can do it at least for the homeless, you know, the homeless uh, uh, along the California coastline and all, all these other places. You know, again, we've got hundreds, and I'm pretty sure California's got homeless towns also, deeper inside inside East California, closer to the desert area, you know. Um, there's a couple of, pro although I, I understand there's a couple of problems where the water has been cut off over there and, uh, and stuff like that. Maybe you guys could clarify that. Uh, I heard some kind of a scandal like that being done, but I can't really remember. Uh, I can't remember the, the, the details. Um, but yeah, um, back to the uh, hurricane, you know, all my hopes and prayers go to them. And I hope everybody out there, um, you know, we all just keep continuing, even if it's just a couple of cans of food, you know, because you know they're going to need it, you know, even if it's just a blanket that you don't even use anymore, because you know they're going to need it, you know. And it sounds kind of corny, but you get what I'm saying. Um, you know what I'm saying? Serve blankets to the to the homeless people and all this stuff, you know. Um that's not necessarily all that they need, but you, you get what I'm saying. Um, so that's all that I'm, that's all for it right now. Again, my hopes and prayers for everybody that's about to get hit by that hurricane. The ones that are already getting hit on West Mexico, uh, you know, take care of yourselves. Uh, and we'll see you after. All right. This is Chris with Chris's comments. Thank you all so much. Uh, if you got any kind of information or details or whatever to share, share it. Uh, the organization, the charitable organizations and stuff, and as well as any kind of information uh, concerning the situations that are at hand right now. Uh, thank you so much for listening. You know, especially since I'm doing a lot of babbling. None of this is scripted. Uh, I haven't done a scripted work in quite a while. Um, and it's because of this new job. I'm just too, I'm just so tired from working, you know, 10 hour work days and then four to five hours on, on, uh, on Saturday with only one day off on Sunday, you know, but it's getting the bills paid and it's getting, you know, it's getting the job done. It's getting, you know, I'm catching up and getting out of debt slowly and then catching up on my bills and all this good stuff. And with just a little bit of time just before starting work, 
popping up right here. Again, like, like this is one of the reasons why I say, look, I'm one of you guys. I'm just out here voicing my opinion. You know me. You know me. And it, I'm just like you guys. Um, but I do tend to the clerical version of this stuff. I do read notes and, and uh, messages and comments and stuff. I, I check them out and everything. And uh, anything you can share, you know, to keep me from having to fall under the, the guidance of somebody's rhetoric, you know, or, or some other person's propaganda. Uh, yeah, that, that'd be most helpful. <laughs> Alrighty. This is Chris. Chris Comments, signing out.